Hi, I'm very excited today about the recipe I'm going to make. The recipe I'm going to make is called Bofrut in Ghana, but it's a local um, donut, um, also known as mandasi in other African countries, even though um, the variations might be different. Um, I'm going to start off with two cups of water that I'm going to be heating up in the microwave for one minute. So whilst that is heating, um, the donuts in Africa, when you are making them, you just need warm water, some yeast, sugar, and some oil to fry it. But if you want to make it get fancy and perhaps get some crunchy donuts at the end, the secret to that is to add a little bit of baking powder to the mixture. So I'll begin first of all by showing you some of the ingredients. Since I bake a lot in this house, I often buy a big um, bag of active yeast and freeze it in the freezer when I'm done using it. And you need some sugar. The sugar will depend upon how much flour and water you're using, some baking powder, and then some oil. I wouldn't add an egg to this um, recipe, but for the next recipe, I'm going to add an egg to show you the difference between the two. My water has been heating for just a minute. I'll be pouring this water into this bowl here. And into that, I'm going to add some spoons of um, yeast. This one. This two. And I'll add, start off by adding a teaspoon of sugar to cooking the activation um, process. It's, going, it's not going to take long for this water, um, for the yeast to foam up in the warm water. This has just been in the water for just a minute and it's already foaming. If you are not using a bread maker, you have to let it stand for about five minutes in um, hot weather. But since I'm going to be using a bread maker, this is the first time I'm going to use the bread maker for the recipe for the bullfrog to see how fast it will go. So into this, I'm going to add two cups of sugar about three tablespoons of extra virgin oil. If you don't want to use extra virgin oil, you can use melted butter. And I'm just going to shift my flour into here. Start off with two cups of all-purpose flour, and I'm going to add half teaspoon of baking powder. You can add salt if you want, but I haven't done it yet. And then you stir this. The difference between this dough and the bread dough is that the bread dough is much thicker. But for the both fruit, it's a softer dough you make. So I'm adding to the two cups, three. I'm developing this recipe with you guys now. I've made it many times but I haven't taken the time to write down the, the measurements. You have to stir it around. I added half cup of all-purpose flour, and I think I, would, I like the consistency of this go fruit. That is perfect. So what I'm going to do right now is to put it in the bread maker and let the bread maker do the kneading for me so that it rises faster. But if you do not have a bread maker, you just have to cover this with a lid, put it at one corner of your kitchen and let it rise. I've put this in the bread maker and as I initially indicated, this is my first time of doing it this way. So hopefully it should rise faster for me. So I'll put it on and then um, select the cycle, which will be dough for this machine. I will be select and the number for dough on this machine is seven then I hit start and it will start um, kneading for me this dough has just risen the way I want it 
So I'm going to take it out. And then I'm going to begin frying the... For the bull fruit you need about five to six cups of oil. Right now I have five cups of oil in the pot here and I've raised it to high. So when this is heated, then I'll start frying the bull fruit. I'm going to put a toothpick in to show you if the oil is ready and the bubbles coming up, which is an indication that the oil is heated enough. So I have my dough here that has risen so perfectly. So I'll wet my hands in this water and then cut and throw it in. It's too high right now. So I'll try to make some circular balls to throw it in, but they do it so well in Africa. I don't know if I can imitate that. They squeeze it like this and it falls like a donut. But it's hard for me to do so. I always just cut the right quantity and throw it in there. Try to make it a ball. And after the oil heats up, it's a great idea to lower it a little bit to medium high so that the donuts do not burn. So the sizes of the donut depends on what you want. If you want huge bullfrog, you put a big piece in there. So I wash my hands, dry them, then flip the bullfrog over. Ooh, that looks good. If they're sticking together, you can separate them. I'm gonna make really small ones and medium sized ones and towards the end, I'll make some huge ones. That looks good. So I'll let this cook and then I keep on turning till it's light golden brown or dark golden brown, depending on the color that you want it. Then you take it out. I'm just about ready. I drain time this one so for the first for the next batch I'll time it and let you know the approximate time that it will cook. It looks great. I'll take it out and put into a sieve here with a plate underneath to catch the excess oils. Then I'll soak my hands again and repeat the process. This time I'm going to make them very small. Just be careful to not rub water as I just did. Making these smaller in the next batch. So you can make them into any shape that you want. Remember to wet your hands or else the dough will stick to your hands the whole time and shake off the excess water so depending on how you drop it in if it's oblong you get some long one if you add it round I think there's no space now so I put this in this is cooking really fast here I put it in about 30 seconds ago and it's already getting brown and I think I put too much here so when you are making it don't put as much as I have just done it's not a good tend to do try to seal tan up perfect smells really good I wish they were smell vision so I'll cook this again tanning from time to time to get this color again I've put the first batch here and I'll take out the second batch put it in here to drain the excess fatty oils or fats And the next batch that I'll put in would be bigger than that. I'm going to make these ones very big. So for them, I'm going to put about four. See how well it expands out. Five 
ไปปุ๋ยเจ็ดแอนน่าบุฟรูดอิสอิทินวิธพอร์เรจคันจะสบีอิทินอาเซสนักอัสเวลและโซลทุกที่ในกาน So the advantages about making your own bow fruit is that you don't have to. You know what goes into the bow fruit. You use the oils that you want to use. Limit the amount of sugar going in, and then just fry enough for you. The leftover dough can be put in the fridge, and then use day in and out, and that should be fine. So I'll fry this for about seven minutes. Stirring and making sure that each side is well coated, brown before I take it out. This is the finished product: b o f r o a d to go with the cocoa. So as it's been standing there, it's picking up. So I'll put this in a bowl here. Is that enough for you? And then I'll add some sugar. And then it will be taken with the buffalo. A very authentic Ghanaian meal, taken at breakfast time, taken when you are sick in the hospital, and it can be eaten with kose as well. Another um, kose is um, bean fritters that I'll be making down the end. But for today. Enjoy cocoa and buffalo.